Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about Lyme disease and the deer tick. Remember, if you are not members of Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics, your pediatrician may have a different opinion than we do. And please follow their guidelines, not ours. First of all today, Lyme disease is not a life-threatening disease. It is a short-term life-altering disease and in very, very rare cases can become chronic, but that is extremely rare in the pediatric population. In this region of the country, we find that uh, Lyme is very high in the spring and the fall. However, it is also in the winter now. Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics in 2009 had 90 cases of Lyme disease and five in the winter. That is quadruple what we had in 2006. So we're re really reaching an almost epidemic proportion with uh, the deer ticks, deers, and Lyme disease. Today, I want to go through a couple of the most frequently asked questions. And I cannot emphasize enough, a picture's worth a thousand words. In other words, what I mean is, if you want to identify the tick, it's hard for us to do it over the phone. Go to the website, tickencounter.org. Again, Tick Encounter, T I C K E N C O U N T E R dot org. That site will help you identify the tick and will also show you how to remove the tick as well. And always remember, you will probably never fully remove the tick. And that's okay because it's the stomach that carries the Lyme disease. And with that removed, there's not going to be a problem with your child continually being potentially infected with Lyme disease. Now, when does the rash occur? Anywhere from three to 30 days, often three to seven days. Your child can get fever and flu-like symptoms, which are headache, body ache, and fever. All three things you really should have in general to, to be defined in addition to the rash to be defined as having Lyme disease. Now, people will say, isn't it true though, without the bullseye rash, that um, you can still get Lyme disease? The answer to that is yes. But that 20% that people talk about that there isn't a rash is oftentimes probably because the rash is in the scalp and nobody sees it. That's why it's important, and we'll go over in a minute again, to have the tick shower card as well. But the important thing is, is, is that when you have the bullseye rash, you don't have to be immediately treated you can be treated within about 48 hours. And interestingly enough, the rash generally lasts a number of days, but can go away as, quick, as quickly as within 24 hours. Please refer to the uh, Department of Public Health website at mass.gov slash dph. Again, mass.gov slash dph. Now, people can at times have Lyme disease, without seeing the rash, as we said. This is, this is commonly occurs in the summer with fever and flu-like symptoms, headache, body ache, and fever, okay? Without a rash in an area such as Medfield, parts of Westwood, Dover, parts of Easton, Norton, Mansfield, that you can have Lyme disease when you have flu-like symptoms in the summer. The difference is, flu will have a cough versus Lyme disease will not have a cough. So if you have symptoms of headache, body ache, and fever, all three together, you should give us a call if it's in the middle of summer and you live in these towns that are endemic with uh, Lyme disease. Other questions people ask is, should I get the tick tested for Lyme? This is controversial. A friend of mine who's an entomologist would say yes. I say no because it really doesn't matter how long, um, um, it really doesn't matter if the tick has been on for a brief period of time, under 36 hours, because you will not be infected even if the Lyme tick, the deer tick has Lyme disease in it. When is blood work useful? Blood work is only useful in cases where you're trying to confirm whether a swollen joint could be Lyme arthritis or somebody may have Lyme meningitis. Otherwise, blood work is not useful. When you have the bullseye rash in the early phases of Lyme disease, your test 
almost invariably will be negative and there is no use in drawing the blood. And follow-up blood tests won't help if you've been treated as well. Is there a vaccine? There was at one point a vaccine, but the, the effectiveness was in question a little bit. And also, because vaccines have had such a difficult rap lately, people did not want to take risks of lawsuits against them that w were developing vaccines at the time for Lyme disease. What is chronic Lyme disease? And I see a lot of information on the internet and people using antibiotics for long periods of time, sometimes up to a year. According to present guidelines, and these may be subject to change someday, but the present guidelines do not recommend using antibiotics beyond a month with Lyme disease, period. Now, now there may be occasional cases where we may want to prophylax somebody for Lyme disease. You have to be over nine years of age and have a tick bite in an area endemic with Lyme to consider it. We oftentimes leave the judgment to the parents with this because the risk of getting Lyme disease from a deer tick is, is about one in 30 untreated, one in 250 treated with a single dose of doxycycline or tetracycline. And you must remember that there are also side effects. Some parents, for myself for example, one in 30 is fine with me. I'm not going to put my child on the antibiotic because there's a risk of getting um, stomach aches uh, from the antibiotic. Some people don't think that, ri think that risk is too high and would rather have one in 250. And this is the judgment we allow at Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics for parents. Finally, prevention. What do we do for prevention? There are numerous things you can do. Number one, put DEET on your children's clothes and on the skin that's exposed. This is safe. It has been shown to be safe. Night, since 1940, DEET has been used on multiple, multiple times in the military and has had no long-term ill effects that we know of. Two, you can spray your clothes, not your skin, with permethrin and don't get it near cats because it's deadly to cats. But it will kill, if you spray your shoes and you spray your clothes, it will kill the deer tick almost instantly if they come in contact with it. Ideally, people should wear long sleeve shirts and pants and tuck their clothes in. That is not ideal in 80, 90 degree weather in the summer. So that's why we strongly recommend you have the tick shower card. This shower card is very important and very important for your children to learn at, by age six how to check themselves for deer ticks. The green parts they feel for little bumps, the black and white parts they look in a mirror. Because you have to remember, when your child hits 11, they aren't going to allow you in the bathroom anymore to look for deer ticks. And oftentimes the serious types of Lyme disease, the Lyme meningitis and the Lyme arthritis, are in the older kids because they don't look. Come by Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics and pick one up. It's completely free for you to have. Finally, there are other things. We have a handout that shows something called tick, Gaminex tick tubes. The mice in the yard, your yard, which transmit the ticks to the deer, are oftentimes have nests in stone walls, under leaf, leaf brushes that you haven't gotten rid of. And it's very important that you put these, t these Gaminex tick tubes out for the mice to then be able to take the cotton out of it that's laced with permethrin, put it in their nest, and it kills the ticks on them and their offspring so it does not get transmitted to the deer and hence reduces the load for you and your pets for um, the deer ticks in your yard. I can't emphasize enough to you that going to tickencounter.org will also show you how to assess your yard and how to reduce the risk in your yard of Lyme disease. Please, 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 please investigate that site. As I also said, the mass.gov slash DPH is the one that will show you all the information about the uh, deer tick as well. Thank you very much, and may you have a tick-free spring, summer, fall, and winter.